It's Burns against Ryan. And Burns buries it into the bottom corner. The glory of two to the grand final. The giants of the old era are now the giant killers of the new era. Hello, welcome to Football 360, WA's only online show dedicated at covering and profiling local talent and football. In a moment, we'll hear from some Perth Glory players in the lead up to that all important clash against the Brisbane Raw this weekend. Football 360 also goes deep inside one of WA's most historic clubs and digs up the South American star rumoured to be the next big A-League signing. We'll also catch up with Matilda star Sam Kerr and check out the latest on her rehab and we'll tell you what's happening here behind me at the annual country camp. And don't forget all the match of the week highlights with Ashley Morrison. But first, it's the Brisbane Raw set to host Perth Glory. The big question is, can the glory days of today emulate the success of the glory days of old? Here's what some of the glory stars had to say this week. Well, that's what we've been saying all along. Um, you know, that was our hope coming here. Obviously my first season here was try to bring back the, you know, the good old days of the glory. and. Um, it seems as though we're, we're on the right track. We definitely have the belief that we can go and um, you know, do something special on Sunday in Queensland. Um, you know, obviously they've batted us twice this year and I think one game we should have probably beat them. Uh, so we're obviously going to concentrate on that game and uh, we know that we can play well against them. So there is belief there. It's going to be a difficult game because Brisbane are, are, I think, a fantastic football inside, but they're not unbeatable. And uh, the way we're playing just now, we think we can go over there and, uh, and clinch the win. One glory legend who knows the pain and pleasure of grand finals is former captain Jamie Harnwell. Here's what he had to say about the big match. Look, I think glory carry a lot of self-belief themselves now after these the, the last two games. Uh, they've been fantastic. And, you know, Brisbane we've seen never lay down in, in last year's grand final was a perfect example at 2-0 down with a couple of minutes to go. But, you know, if you can get ahead of them, it's just going to be a hard fight and a hard slog. But, uh, you know, I think glory have the players who can do that. Your tip? Look, my heart says glory. Uh, my head, unfortunately, still says Brisbane. Good luck to the Glory boys and our best wishes also go with Football West Matthew Cheeseman. He's been selected to run the line in this weekend's grand final. It was only two years ago Bayswater City were floundering in arguably football wilderness, but with a new coach and some dazzling new Colombian talent, the Bayswater boys have emerged as a genuine premiership contender. <laughs> Look, I've made very clear the point when I took over in 2009, I actually cut seven players straight away on the spot because I didn't like the attitude of training. And I made the point very clear since day one that I don't allow no professionals. Players are players. If they train well and focused, they get results. Is Bayswater in 2012 a strong premiership title contender? I think so, yes. It's pointless to hide in saying that we're not good enough to chase the league. I recruited to win the league this year. Bayswater City will be looking to goal sneak Gustavo Marulanda. The 25-year-old Colombian has turned heads since arriving in WA two years ago. He's, he's a very important player for us, but we're probably going to lose him after the season because uh, I know that there are at least two or three early clubs there after him. I was in Colombia playing for a second division team. But I had a friend who came here a long time ago, let's say five years ago, and he invited me to come over. The purpose was to learn English and give it a go with football. It has become a little bit more serious now. There are a few clubs in the A-League, they have shown some interest. Definitely working very hard every day to go that step up. I'm really surprised at football here. The standard, the level is really good. You are a bit of a goal-scoring machine. Now, how does it feel to be sort of be under the radar and be targeted by defenders uh, week in, week out? To be honest, it feels really good. It makes me work even harder every day to score more goals. And yeah, I just love it. Bayswater has a history of producing some of Australia's top players. 
Chris Hurt from you know Aston Villa, Brad Jones uh, for Liverpool is the second string keeper there. Uh, then you have uh, young Julius contracted to Bayern Munich. In the state league, you have the neighbour twins and, and so forth. Uh, Alan McKenzie that uh, you know played for Glory. But the club has gone back to basics in recent years and was even relegated to the first division before climbing back to the top flight at the end of 2010. You know the club was uh, in a sense uh, sick, uh, so to speak and needed to be revamped. I could see the signs on the walls that we needed to rebuild and uh, strip everything apart, and this is what we've done. Jerry Mayo admits coach Mauro Marchione has been pivotal in steering the team to its on-field success. And I believe that, you know, Bayswater has got the best coach in, not only in this league, but also Australia, as far as I'm concerned. Because I was a rough defender, I couldn't play the ball properly. My dream has always been to, to have a team that can play the ball. And that's my first aim was to play good football. Everybody, if you play well, sooner or later, the results will come along as a consequence. And it may even include some silverware at the end of the season. You've probably noticed dozens of boys just behind me showing off their skills. They are in fact a selected group for the annual country camp. To tell us more about it is Andrew Battelle. Andrew, welcome to Football 360. Thanks Peter. It's uh, good to be making my debut on the show. Country camp has now been running for oh, more than a decade and I've now been involved for uh, uh, seven years. This is my seventh year. Uh, it involves boys and girls from the age of 12 up to the age of 16. These are our oldest lads. And out of here we select uh, regional teams, regional state teams, who travel to Southeast Asia uh, to play in a couple of tournaments such as the Borneo Cup and the Singapore Cup at the end of the year in October and November. How critical are camps like these in unearthing the next Harry Kuehl, the Mark Viduka or uh, Josh Riston for that matter? Uh, well of course Josh Riston uh, actually attended these camps as a 12 and 13 year old so there it does show that it is part of the pathway. The big secret in, in developing any talent is to get uh, like playing and training with like. Basically from up in Dampier we get chosen for a craft representative team. So we come down here in October for Country Week. I reckon it really improves my game. You get to come down here, experience how other lads play football and you know you can't really get that up from up in Dampier. Well we got chosen from Country Week in Kalgoorlie. At Country Week we played all the regional teams and then we moved here, Country Camp. Yeah, I'd like to play soccer for my whole life. Football's a passion, so really, as far as I can go, I'd love to make a living out of it. Like most country kids, they're, they're into everything, and when they're into it, it's 100% or nothing. We're, we're never struggling to get kids to come and play the game, and many of them, of course, play the other games as well. That's just the nature of country sport. Bankwest, happily supporting the communities of WA. It's time to check out the highlights from the match of the week with Ashley Morrison. Round four saw two unbeaten sides go head to head. Balcata created the first opening when Jason Colley failed to clear Italiano's free kick. Jason Barrera pounced and was unlucky to see his shot rebound off the post. It was Inglewood who opened the scoring straight after half time. Perich fed Craig who laid it off to Richmond to cross. The ball fell to Samet, and as he looked to get closer to goal, it struck Madashi's arm, and Inglewood had a penalty. Samet duly dispatched it, firing into Italiano's top right-hand corner. Inglewood's second was all class, a wonderful example of one-touch football. Richmond to Perich, back to Richmond, who drew the defence and played in Bozinski, who arrowed his shot into the bottom corner of Italiano's goal. Are you going with more of a youth aspect this season? Or? Um, we go with the players who are worth the spot in the team. Um, if they happen to be 18 year old, then they'll play. If they're not, the 20 year old will play. If they're 28, they'll play. But yeah, we've got a fairly young team and a fairly young squad, but you know, it wasn't designed around specifically doing that. It was designed around getting a good team on the park. And um, you know, we're still working towards that. At the end of round four, Bunbury 4 and Force showed they will be no easy beats in the Premier League, 
while Armadale still search for their first point of the season. Sorrento won bragging rights over arch rivals Joondalup, while the Western Knights slumped to their biggest ever defeat, completely outclassed by a younger, fitter Bayswater City. Which means that Perth Glory-backed Inglewood United remain the only unbeaten side in the league. However, Florida and Sorrento are close on their heels. Looking ahead to this weekend, Florida Athena have the chance to move equal top if they can overcome Inglewood United, while the match of the week is the Sunday fixture between 6th placed Sterling Lions and 5th placed Perth Soccer Club. Today we um, took some time out with Sam Kerr in the gym while she's been doing her rehab exercises. Four months post-op ACL reconstruction. So we're going to have a chat to Sammy and maybe she can explain how it happened and what it involves. Well, I was away at Olympic qualifications with the Matildas. We had our second training session and we were just having a game of possession and I was just running and my knee just popped. Found out I'd tore my ACL and had to have an operation five days later and the last four months I've just been in the gym um, strengthening my muscles around it, trying to get back on the field. So how long do they expect you'll be out of the game? I had my operation in September. They say 12 months but hopefully I can push for a bit quicker than that. This year I'm out so then maybe come back for the W League and then maybe play overseas the year after. Just looking forward to the big picture and the Asian Cup 2013 I think it is. and then the World Cup hopefully in 2014 if I'm back by then, which I will be. Waste has been good since I've done my knee. Good to have a good program set up for me and have a guideline of what I'm meant to be doing just keeps me in place. All the support's been great. How did you yourself get into football? Well I originally played AFL. I played up until I was 12 and then it started to get a bit rough because I was playing with the boys and I didn't really want to make the change but I guess I had to and thank God I did because it's given me so many great opportunities and great friendships and got to see the world. And that wraps up another edition of Football 360. Just before I go, if you're not doing anything this weekend, try to get on down to Macedonia Park for the big match between Stirling and Perth. Even Federal Sports Minister Kate Lundy will be there. Good luck once again to the Glory Boys in the grand final showdown against Brisbane and we'll see you again next week. Bye for now.